Hi, everybody. Um, thanks again for being here. I'm Alex. I'm a software engineer at Algolia, and I work primarily on the Algolia dashboard. So for those of you who don't know, it's a fairly large uh, client-side application that uh, our users are using to uh, configure the search, uh, test it, uh, monitor the performance, monitor what's going on. And we use TypeScript on the Algolia dashboard along with React. So today, I'm going to do a, a quick pragmatic introduction to using TypeScript with React. So I'm going to I'm going to start ah this is better. I'm going to start with a quick introduction to TypeScript, uh, how you can easily add TypeScript to an in, um, an existing project, how you can use it to type React components and how you can use it to type more things. So quick introduction. This is a, a typical TypeScript file. Um, so I think it's so it's taken and adapted from the Angular documentation. And you can see a bunch of nice things, like a triple slash directive to uh, reference uh, type declarations. You have a custom module system, which is not exactly the same as the ES6 one. You have class decorators, a bunch of more decorators. Um, some information about uh, visibility of properties, uh, with type, um, type annotations and constructor assignment and a bunch of other stuff. And okay, I'm just kidding. This is TypeScript, this is valid TypeScript, but it doesn't need to be that way. Um, this is valid TypeScript. So it's it's literally just, um, just JavaScript. It will work. Of course, you're gonna wanna do a bit more things like add uh, annotations about the types. So for some variables, for some arguments, um, TypeScript would do a fairly good job at inferring types as much as possible. So here, for instance, oh, sorry. Uh, it will infer the return type of the function and the type of the currency argument. Um, but in the end, uh, you can write very, very simple TypeScript that is pretty much just JavaScript a bit enhanced. So let's have a look at some of the types that we can use. Um, you can use any which uh, is the widest type and will work with everything. Obviously, it's, it's usually not a very good idea and we can tell the compiler to ignore it, or at least to, to return errors. Uh, you can have primitives like number of strings, uh, you can have arrays, you can say that a, a variable is either a number or a string, which is a union, um, then you can cast it as a string to, to force the compiler to recognize it as a string. You can write um, interfaces uh, that uh, define the shape of objects. So here, for instance, there's a name attribute, which is a string, and an optional age attribute, which is a number. And you can have key types to represent maps and things like that. Um, you can do things which are a bit more fun. So you can have uh, generic types. Uh, so for instance, say you have form data, and you want to represent um, an object which has values and errors which all relate to the same type. Like it can be a user, it can be uh, billing information. Uh, so you can you can use um, type arguments to do that. You can do the same thing inside a function. So you can define functions that uh, that take an argument which can, which can be anything. And the nice thing is that uh, TypeScript will automatically understand what type you're using when you actually call it. So that was a very brief introduction, and you might wonder why why use TypeScript. So there's a bunch of uh, low-hanging fruits that, that come with just using TypeScript and not changing a lot of your code. Um, for the documentation, it, it helps a lot. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have um, defined JS docs. Uh, here, you don't have to define all your arguments, the types, the return types of functions. It, it's all understood by the compiler, and you can generate doc automatically. Um, you can find some bugs um, statically, so before the runtime. If you call functions uh, in the wrong way, it will find it. If you try to do things on objects that could be null, it will it will raise errors. Um, it also helps a lot with uh, refactoring. So you can just change something, and it will break everything, and you just fix everything until it, uh, it compiles. Uh, when you use React, uh, it also um, does a nice prop type checking on the JSX uh, before you actually run it, which is which is pretty nice. Um, 
but one of the biggest things with uh, with TypeScript is that the developer experience is is really nice. Um, most editor support is is very good, and in particular, VS Code is pretty amazing. Uh, it's a bit of a gateway drug to to TypeScript. Uh, here you have an example of of um, some TypeScript code with the VS Code, and you can see that it has a really nice auto completion. Uh, it tells you about the arguments of functions you're using, and it tells you about errors when you when you use things uh, incorrectly. Um, it's also really easy to add type definitions for common uh, libraries. You don't have to use a, a specific CLI, you just use NPM, uh, and the definitions are generally pretty good. So how do I go about uh, adding types to an existing code base? Let's break everything. So the first thing you want to do is, is add a way to convert your files. So Assuming you use Webpack, you're going to add the TypeScript loader and map it to uh, TypeScript to TS and TSX files. And you're going to add a bunch of um, type definitions. They all live in the same uh, NPM namespace, which is add types, which is very easy to discover them, which makes it very easy to discover them. Then you're going to add a TS config file. Uh, so by default, it's going to be fairly lenient. Uh, which helps when you're introducing uh, TypeScript on a fairly large project. So by default, it's, it's not going, it's going to, when you don't provide um, type definitions, it's, uh, type annotations, it's going to uh, use any everywhere. So it's, it's going to work, even though it's, it's not going to be as useful as, as it can. Um, you're, going, you're also going to allow JavaScript, which lets you uh, convert files one at a time without having to change everything. And you're going to disable uh, strict null checks, which uh, makes it easier to to convert existing code. Then the only step that's left is just renaming a file to TypeScript. See that it breaks everything, or not, but usually it does. And then you fix until it compiles. And then you start again, and you start again. It's a fairly simple process. Um, a few tips and tricks uh, that can help you on large projects. If you have really complex uh, JavaScript files, uh, you might not want to migrate everything at the same time. So you can use declaration files that will leave uh, alongside your, your JavaScript files and just uh, annotate the um, interfaces of what you're exporting. So no actual implementations. You can also extend any existing type definitions. So uh, built-in definitions um, or anything you import from, from type definitions on, on NPM. Um, you can reopen everything and, and fix anything that you think should be fixed or add uh, functions if you monkey patch everything, uh, which is probably a bad idea. Um, something else you can do easily, and, and that's pretty useful for Webpack, is um, you can declare generic interfaces for modules that are um, not TypeScript. So if you use, for instance, the React SVG loader, uh, which lets you import SVG files and automatically converts them to React components, you can very easily declare a module which will work on any SVG file and, and um, make them understandable by TypeScript. Once you've done that and you feel more comfortable with TypeScript, it's probably a good idea to make everything a bit more strict. So everything we, we had enabled at the beginning, um, disable it. So implicit any, um, you can prevent it, so it will force you to add annotations everywhere, but you will get a lot more benefits um, in your ID or in, in the type checking. Uh, you can enable uh, strict null checking, which uh, will make sure that you handle um, corner cases um, when variables can be null or undefined. It will not compile if you don't actually handle those cases. And very importantly, you want to disable um, allow.js. So it makes it AlloJS makes it easier to migrate a project, but when you disable AlloJS, you, you can actually go faster because as soon as you migrate any file, you have to migrate every single import to the TypeScript, and it in the end, it goes pretty fast. So you will start from the inside, from the deeper um, files that you have, and you will go back to, uh, to the top. All right. Let's look at um, a few examples of how you can type React components. So I'm sure most of you, if you've used React, you've used prop types, which let you check uh, that the properties which are passed to a component have the correct type uh, at runtime. Um, defining uh, prop types in, in, 
defining prop types in JavaScript, um, in TypeScript, sorry, is, is, is very similar. So here you just define an interface. Uh, so there's three props. One is a string, one is optional and is either large or small, and one is a user. And you just um, add it as a type argument when you define your class component or your stateless functional component. Then when you use uh, the component in JSX, um, and you use it incorrectly, so here, for instance, it's missing the label, you will get instant feedback um, from the compiler that it and which, which will tell you that the label is missing and it will refuse to compile, which is pretty nice. Um, this, this, in my opinion, is, is one of the biggest value of using TypeScript when you do React. Uh, it makes it really easy to handle like large code bases with a lot of common components and while it doesn't replace unit testing, it helps a lot, uh, preventing regressions when you change stuff. Uh, it makes everything safer on, on fairly big code bases. It's nice. If you want to define, if you want to use state, if that's your thing, you can also do it by providing a second argument uh, to React component, and it will do what you expect. If you try to set a state that doesn't work, it will tell you. So the Error messages are not always uh, super explicit, but uh, usually they're enough to, to find out where the errors are. Uh, so if we try to do something a bit more interesting, um, we want to have a component that has a generic type like we've seen before. So for instance, a form. Remember the form data example? We want a form that has two props and they have the same type. So how do we enforce that? If we want, for instance, the form to modify user data, um, we'll want to to use it. And for instance, here we have a user interface with a name, and we provide it as values. But the default values is incorrect. It has a surname. By default, TypeScript is not gonna work. is It's not gonna say anything. It's it's actually gonna gonna be happy with that, because it will infer here that the type is is uh, any. If we go back to our previous example of uh, functions and how it infers types automatically from functions. When you call them, it will understand that what type you're using is actually, which type you're, you're actually using. Um, if we go back to JSX and how it disregards to uh, create element call, it's not actually a, a function call on the form and it, for some reason, doesn't manage to uh, find the type and just uses any as a fallback. So the solution here will be to uh, to create a, a slightly artificial uh, class, which is a bit like casting the class and um, enforcing that you're using this class, which which only uses user as a type. And in this case, it will work as you expect, and it will raise as. So you can type, I I obviously you have a lot of value typing other things than, than just React components. Uh, if you're working with functions, the story is not as good as it could be. Uh, so you can't reason about the arguments of a function or you can't reason about the uh, return types of a function. So if you're using Redux and you're trying to type the dispatch function, for instance, uh, you would want to do something like dispatch uh, is a function that returns the type of the function which is written by the function. Um, and you can't do that. There's no good story about that. Uh, what you can do, however, is, is use uh, variadic arguments, uh, but they all have to be the same type. Um, and you can also define function overloads. So when you have um, functions that have uh, different signatures, so they can take different kind of arguments and behave in a slightly different way, you can easily define them by just uh, overloading different definitions. And that works really well because um, when you're inside um, conditional blocks, um, TypeScript will be able to will will understand uh, and be able to narrow the type of the variable. So in so inside this block, for instance, it will it will understand that name or user is a string, and outside it, it will understand that it's actually a user, uh, which is pretty nice. With currying, the story is not that great. Um, you don't have first class support for that, and you end up uh, def overloading, defining overloads for every single uh, combination of your, the possible arguments. This is taken from the Ramda uh, compose uh, definition, and it's not it's not amazing. It's actually much longer than that. Um, last quick example uh, on typing web workers. 
So in the same, so if you use the worker loader in Webpack, for instance, you can very easily import files as workers. And here we define a module similarly to what we've done with SVGs that will um, say that when you import this file, it will return an object which pretty much just has an, uh, an add event listener and a post message um, function. And those both have different types of uh, arguments which are inbound and outbound messages. So when you use them, you can easily define uh, unions of uh, interfaces that define your messages. And when you, that's called uh, tag union types. So they can have different shapes, but they all share the same attribute, which is the type. And when you use them, uh, and you use them inside switch cases, um, again, TypeScript will be able to understand exactly which type of objects you're using, and it will know, yeah, it will know that, um, that you're using the, the first kind or the second kind of, of messages. So uh, in the end, um, I just wanted to say that TypeScript is, is actually fairly easy to introduce. It's, it's presented as a different language, but it's actually very simple and not that different from TypeScript if you, from JavaScript. Um, you get some value fairly easily for type checking and uh, for, for finding bugs and finding regressions. The developer experience is great and it's a pretty good fit for React. Thank you. Yeah, I think we have five minutes for questions. Uh, hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, were you able to reduce the number of unit tests you add uh, with when you introduced uh, TypeScript? Um, so we didn't try to. Uh, I don't think it's meant to replace unit tests of behaviors and things like that. Um, it, it's very helpful for preventing regressions, but it, it's not a replacement for unit tests. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how do you deal with uh, NPM components that are not using uh, TypeScript? Um, so, so there's two scenarios. Either there's an available uh, type definition on, on NPM in the at, at types uh, namespace. And for all the big components, uh, big packages, uh, they're available. Uh, otherwise, you can write um, declaration files where you just list uh, the methods you're using and, and what are the arguments and, and the return types and it's fairly easy to do. Um, otherwise, I think um, it will just use any by default uh, uh, everywhere, so it would just work. There's a number of file in mm -hmm. time. You mean the build, sorry, so the build time? Yeah, the build time of the yeah. for big, especially for big React application. Yeah, so we actually have a trick for that. Uh, so TypeScript is actually fairly slow, the compiler itself. Uh, so type checking is okay, but compiling files is fairly slow. Um, so we, we've done uh, on the dashboard that Algolia to, prevent, to help with that is actually not use TypeScript for uh, the compilation. Um, now in Babel 7, you have support for TypeScript uh, in the same way that it supports Flow, it just strips out annotations. So what we do is we do um, an, uh, a type checking with the TypeScript compiler without actual um, conversion of files, which is pretty fast. And then we just run Babel uh, with um, the TypeScript preset and it, it removes types. There's a gotcha with that is it's if you use features like syntactic features which are really idiosyncratic to TypeScript, um, it will just remove them and it will not work correctly. So don't use anything which is not in JavaScript. Um. Thank you, everybody.